Welcome to another episode of the Beyond Sober Podcast with your host, Cody Rainey. Ding dong, bing bong, tick tock, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Beyond Sober TV, recorded live here on TikTok. Uh, this is also for the podcast as well. We are thriving, we are making magic happen. It, well, I don't even know what day it is. All I do know is, is uh, I feel amazing, right? I've been making so much magic happen. I think it's Monday, is it not? It's, it is, it's only Monday. Is it, time isn't real, all right? So I just do stuff. <laughs> And in the doing stuff, things get done. And uh, lately, I've been, uh, is Crocker Capital in the building? What's up, bro? I see you, man. Goodness gracious. Dude, I've been breaking my, my day down into six-hour blocks. So, like, from, because I'm up at 4 a.m. So, from, like, my day technically starts at 6 a.m. So, from 6 to 6, that's one day. Paulina, what's up, girl? And then from 6 to 12, that's another day. And then from, like, 12 to 6, you see what I'm saying? Was it 12? Is it 12? 12 to 6? Yeah, 6 to 12, 12 to 6. What is it? Then is it 2 a.m., something like that? 6? 12? Shut 6? I'm tripping. 6 to 12. I, math is giving me anxiety, dude. <laughs> anyway, my days that have four days in them. And so my morning's taking care of myself. I'm meditating at 4.30 a.m. I'm drinking my water. Today I got my tea, right? So this is like immune support. <laughs> um, glad to see you're doing well, man. All the best in 2023. 100%. Thank you so much. I'm super duper stoked. Um, I have no idea what I want to talk about, um, mainly because I just felt the inkling to just kind of be here with you, share myself, show you what happiness and healthy looks like. Um, I did just go to the gym. That was super fun uh, out here in Nashville. Super amazing. Since we have so many amazing people in here, if you vibe with me, if, you, if you're digging my Polly Shore looking face, you can appreciate this energy and we haven't connected yet. Do me a couple favors if you feel like it. A couple clicks doesn't hurt. Feel free to follow me if we're not already friends. If you guys would like to stay connected with me off of TikTok, you can hit that link in my bio and share your information. And if you haven't taken a look at Beyond Sober, the official program, that link is also on Beyond Sober or with the link in my bio. So I'm encouraging you guys to connect with me and uh, I'll send over everything you need to continue improving your quality of life. Uh, Six-step recovery guide, you can send me a message and I'll reply with a video or a text message or an email, whatever your per preferred method of contact is, and I will make sure that I get back to you as soon as humanly possible. Hey, friend, what's up? D Sammy in the building. What's up, girl? Our lead grief coach, Sammy Dermer, 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 Sam Sammy, <laughs> she is just making so much magic happen. And I'm so stoked to see you, girl. There's so many things that are happening in 2023. Um, I just got out of a meeting for an app. Um, we got Beyond Sober TV launching. I'm actually recording for Beyond Sober TV right now. Podcast is popping off. The Wiki just launched. Dude, it is just bananas in the sobriety and mental health um, arena. And I'm so stoked that we're all connected. Uh, being hungover, absolutely brutal, and has never made any sense to me. Here's the interesting part about a hangover. It is 95% dehydration and sleep deprivation. Because here's what happens. If you were drinking, then alcohol has been actively disrupting the chemical balance in your brain. Part of those chemicals are the ones that keep your eyes closed and the other ones are the ones that keep your body paralyzed. So you haven't slept. So I know you may have been passed out, but why are you so exhausted? Did you really party that hard? You didn't climb a mountain. You literally drank a bunch of alcohol and then went to sleep. Well, you didn't sleep. You laid there for like six hours. And your body was trying to wake you up to drink water, but you drank too much and your body was numb. So as your body's trying to force you to wake up to either hit the restroom or drink water, you are just stressing your machine out. So that's why you don't get sleep. That's why when people use alcohol to relax and use alcohol to go to sleep, they're actually almost permanently disrupting the natural chemical flow that gets deep sleep. <laughs> deep sleep is where all the healing happens, man. But hangovers, man, there's actually a hangover guide. I should probably put that in the, in the wiki. There's a hangover guide um, inside the Beyond Sober program. It's, uh, I believe it's called the Extreme Hangover Guide. It's how to just not just prevent them, but also how to fix them once they happen. Remember, 
Hangovers are the result of too much poison. Long time no see. Dude, thank you so much. Uh, why the two hex? This, good question. Thank you for being so polite about that. This one, it's, it's going to be negative 15 degrees here in Nashville on Friday. This one keeps my ears warm, and this one's because I'm the shit, and I like wearing hats. And that's my style. That's my vibe. Born and raised California, baby. And so my Cali swag leads me to dress like this. I dig it. I like hats. Why don't you have hats? Normally I wear three hats. I wear two hats and a hood. Make it three. Keep it super duper warm. Uh, finishing module three now. Love your energy. 13 days that count so far. Fuck yeah! That's amazing. So if you guys don't know what she's talking about, module three. Module three is developing healthy habits, okay? Starting with module one, we talk about radical acceptance and how to see things for what they are and not applying our emotions so we stop punishing ourselves for what they're not. In the very beginning of BSO, I'm actively working with you to train your mind and body to expect water. What's up, dude? And as we're working together through the program, you are actually not only hydrating yourself, you're reprogramming your mind to expect water, expect hydration, expect lubrication, and you're literally rewriting the neurological codes that have been accidentally written with alcohol and other toxic behavior. So if you're in module three, you are developing new healthy habits. What's up, girl? New healthy habits. So many of us think that what we're doing is healthy. We think that because we're not drinking alcohol that we're actually doing something good for us. Just because you're not hurting yourself intentionally doesn't mean you're improving yourself. Less of something bad isn't more of something good. <laughs> so that's where we get stuck in these negative cycles. And that's why other programs and other people and those that are not familiar with neural language programming, they aren't familiar with the neuroscience behind language and energy, they go like, your greatest success is going to be how little alcohol you're drinking. Because you're struggling, the less you drink, the more successful you are. That is untrue. That is not true. Your peak of success isn't going to be the little amount of alcohol you do or do not consume. Remember, those days don't matter unless you're making those days count. Why are we counting days if we're not making the days count? If we're not doing anything with our state of sobriety, then you are just not drinking alcohol, and that's not necessarily accomplishment. It feels like one when you're struggling, but there's a place beyond sobriety, which is what we're all technically reaching for. So new healthy habits, it doesn't just mean going to the gym. <laughs> it means... What kind of healthy thoughts are you thinking intentionally? What type of habits are you creating from your subconscious that are actually going to move you forward? How are you feeling about yourself? What, are you act what new healthy patterns are you creating in your life that help you feel like you're actually moving forward? Like what you're doing is contributing to a state of success and progression. And more importantly, what other habits are you actively, intentionally developing that is going to help you feel like you have everything you need, like you are abundant, like there, there's nothing that can move you backwards. What are the fundamental core areas of your mind that are being activated through habits that you're practicing? We think that because we have a habit that we intentionally chose that habit. You did not choose to be your biggest hater. At what point did you switch to being your biggest fan to your biggest fucking critic. Who told you that that was necessary? And why did you believe him again? Why did we believe him? Is because, what, they got authority? What does that mean? Is it because it's, it's your parents? Is it, was it a cop? Who was it? Who told you that you have to beat your ass? You have to beat yourself up. You understand that the world is here to do that for you. You're the last person that needs to be insulting you hurting your own feelings, thinking shitty thoughts on your behalf, and actively attempting to beat you into a state of happiness. If being hard on yourself worked, it would have worked already. But it doesn't. <laughs> That's where toxic reinforcements become embedded, and then we get stuck in these habits of thinking that the harder we are on ourselves, the more work we're actually doing, the more we're moving forward. But that's just, that's just a false reality, man. That's not true. Because look at this, man. 
You don't have to work harder to deserve more. I'm going to say that again. You do not have to work harder to deserve more. You do not have to participate to be valued as a person. Your value as a human is not derivative of what you do for other people. And it's not derivative of how much you're willing to suffer. Right? Think about this. Think about this. You'd be rich and the strongest person on the planet if beating yourself up and making your life harder worked. That's that's boomer shit. <laughs> Older generations think about that. They go, you ever, you ever been in a situation, the friends or family, where it's like they start doing something in the kitchen or they they start cleaning the, the house up and then you automatically start going, what do I need to do? What do I, okay, how do I need to... We're still going to be friends. I'm allowed to sit here. I don't want, I, can't, I can't sit here because if I'm just sitting here and you're cleaning the house and you're cleaning up, I'm obviously not contributing. My value is decreasing the more that you're doing something for yourself. This is like, really think about this. This is part of the reason why we go like, no, 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 I'll clean it up. I got it. We feel like almost like we owe somebody something if they're volunteering their time or their energy or whatever. Because we think that if we don't do something, that we hold less value to the people that we care about or the people we want to care about us. It's this performance. And to be perfectly honest, if you can't value me when I'm doing nothing, I don't care about your value when I'm contributing at all. I don't. I personally do not care how you feel about me if it's based on how much I'm adding to your life. You know, think about this. Paulina, your value increases. Sammy, your value increases because you increase the value of your own life. You know your worth. You take care of you. Your value is perceived specifically by healthier people as, dude, you bring peace to my life because I don't have to fucking tell you what to do. I know polina has got Polina. I know Sammy's got Sammy. <laughs> I know y'all got y'all. I don't have to worry about you. I don't have to wrangle you. I trust you with your emotions. That makes you more valuable. Not the fact that you're like, I know, but I've been doing this and I've been going to work and I've been... I've been, I've been and? And? Dude, working harder doesn't bring more. Because you could work a tenth of the amount. Work is just where you're putting your energy in. Work is where you're putting your energy in. That's it. That's what work is. And it doesn't have to be hard. It's not difficult. Work is work. Work. Is, we're working right now. Where are you putting your energy? You're putting it into you right now. Because there's no obligation for you to hang out. Like, you could go anywhere. I'm encouraging you. You can go anywhere on the planet. Anywhere you want. If there's something more important, go do that. You're also putting in energy over there. So where is this work going? If we're putting in work in areas that don't move us forward in our minds, body, or spirit, then we're just anchoring ourselves in place in using that stress of anchoring ourselves to the ground to validate why we deserve more. <laughs> But you don't understand how hard I've been working. You don't understand the amount of energy I've been putting in. And <laughs> you've been putting it in place. There's nothing wrong with that if you enjoy being there. But struggling forward, putting your energy in things, creating new healthy habits. You don't just wake up with all your new healthy habits. That's the work. <laughs> so module three is first off recognizing what is an actual healthy habit. A healthy habit could be making your bed, man. Do it. Do it! <laughs> right when you wake up, do it. Drink your water, make your bed. That's a new healthy habit, man. When you do it, wash your hands. The dumbest little things go into everything. You're programming your subconscious to remind you that you could take care of yourself like this. You can take care of yourself like that. You can wash that dish. You can make an egg. You can make an, a scrambled eggs. You can add some parsley to that. Here's Whatever. But the point is, is that just not doing something bad isn't necessarily doing something good. And module three is super, super powerful. And that's right before we jump into module four, which is where most people are struggling. Most people are stuck in the past. Paulina, you know this. You're stuck in the past, man. 
When we're having these conversations, we're looking at everything that's ever happened to us. We're looking at all the trauma, all the bull. <laughs> we're looking at how we felt. We are, um, we're looking at all of the things that we think are important and that we must hang on to. Uh, just use that for a TikTok. Great message. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. 21 days uh, free after five years, 10 drinks a day. Goodness gracious, that is amazing. So check this out. You spend 10 years writing codes. Every single day for 10 years, you've been drinking alcohol, which means that there hasn't been a clinically, scientifically, neurological day of sobriety in 10 years for you. That's because it takes four days on average for alcohol to process out of your system. I haven't seen you on my FYP in forever. I keep hearing that, man. That's because I, I haven't, dude, my, my, my videos aren't going anywhere. Dude, I'm getting like 100 views, like, like 500 views on average. Dude, I release up to 10 videos a day. You guys know I've released over 3,500 fucking videos here on TikTok, and they won't show my, show my shit. <laughs> I, it, it's so frustrating, dude. I've been on this platform for years, man, since two, the end of 2020, 2020, right? So like two and a half years or something like that. 3,500 videos, all talking about sobriety, mental health, personal growth, development, progress, success, right? Speaking too much truth. Here's, if I start talking a bunch of shit, I'll get some views, but I'm not an angry person. As a matter of fact, I've realized that in order to actually create some traction, I need to start polarizing the industry. And so I have, dude, I'm telling you, I'm up at 4 a.m. writing content, studying mental health, sobriety, all this stuff, practicing these things, but I'm actually looking at polarizing the industry and going like, did you know, check this out, did you know there's like two different realms of people? <laughs> My sobriety uh, video is normally saying, I know, it's so insane. Th there's people that go like, I'll ask you this, I'll ask, because I got a video coming out, I haven't recorded it yet, but you know there's people that would rather say, dude, put them in jail and let them deal with their sobriety there. Like they actually feel, like this is real. There's a whole debate going on about going, just put the addicts in jail. They'll figure it out. Just incarcerate the people that are struggling the worst. They'll get the mental health that they need. They'll, they'll get the support they need. What are you talking about, dude? Who, who thinks like that? We understand that alcohol and addiction is the symptom of poor mental health. There's never been a happy, healthy person that has like truly struggled with addiction. They may be, I met with a woman, she's 60, three or some 60 years old she's dabbling with drinking a little too much on the weekend but at her core she's a happy healthy person she just doesn't like the way she her new relationship with alcohol because of her stress so remember happy healthy people don't struggle with addiction and the proof on that is also if you find someone that used to be addicted it's very rare that they are equally as miserable they are so happy it, first off, in contrast to what they struggle with, the hell that they've been going through for so long, they actively are working on struggling forward. They're finding reasons why sobriety and happiness is way more better <laughs> than being faded. But to take someone like that and go like, you know what? You're an addict. I'm going to label your ass. You're an alcoholic. You should be in jail. There these are things, people are saying this, man. People wholeheartedly believe that it's a good idea to incarcerate people simply because they have an addiction or are practicing alcoholic behavior. That's absolute bananas. Sonny, what's up, girl? That's absolute bananas, right? It's me again. <laughs> I feel like everyone is going through seasonal depression and it feels like uh, time is going faster. If time is going faster, that's actually an indicator that you're more present in the moments. That's a really good thing. If time is just flying by you, then you're like, damn, I'm actually, I'm, I'm giving my attention so deeply to what's happening here that time is flying by. The interesting part is time isn't real. 
And if it is real, it's moving through you. It's not actually on a plane here. Like, time isn't linear. It is central, which means you are the center point of all time and space. This is why you are the center of your own universe, which is also why when you feel like you're struggling, it feels like you're the only one on the planet who is struggling. And it makes it really difficult to connect to other people because you go, there's no way that you're struggling in the way that I am because I'm the center of my world. That's the cool part about being human, is we all think that, and we all feel that. Hey, what's up, full of heart? So good to see you. That's, it's so interesting what happens when we give all of our attention to how miserable we feel. A lot of times when that happens, we're, first off, we amplify it, because here's, here's the thing. There are things that get your attention, and then there are things that you give your attention to. <laughs> So I'm giving my attention to you. And what's getting my attention is all these comments, right? Now I'm going to give my attention to these comments. I'm the guy that said a long time ago, no see, looking good. Oh, wait. Hey, thank you, man. So the comments got my attention, but they don't deserve my attention until I prioritize it. Same goes with pain and anguish in the past and, and trauma and stories and all that stuff. We think that just because we had a thought about the past that it deserves all of our attention. So we, boo! <laughs> so we give intentionally our attention. Thank you so much. We give our attention to the things that are getting our attention. And very rarely are we evaluating that information and deciding whether or not it needs to be in our life. We just go like, well, it's here. So there's a problem because it won't go away. Nothing goes away if you don't give it a reason to dissipate. It continues to show up because it still needs your attention. I want you to look at your thoughts. Hello, what's up, man? I want you to look at your thoughts and these emotions and these feelings and these attributes and the things that get your attention. And instead of going like, what the actual, you can go interesting. You can look at these things from an objective standpoint, which means it's just like reading it on a piece of paper. You're just going like, that's an interesting thought. Write that down. Hmm. Another thought. Write that down. That's an interesting feeling. Write that down. Or take note of it. Because the point is, is that everything that pops up is meant for you to, to give your awareness to. But it doesn't mean you have to imbibe the toxicity with it. It, it does not mean you have to feel the feeling that goes along with the thought. As a matter of fact, a feeling and a thought... They're not linked. We link them. Your feeling and your emotion are not linked. We link them. We think that because we feel a certain way, we have an emotion. That's not true. And we think that because we feel a certain way within an emotion, that that's a feeling. Not true. You can actually have a feeling about an emotion. An emotion through thinking about a feeling. But being able to discern what this is actually comes down to you becoming aware that it's there. So when we drink or when we imbibe toxicity, when we get lost in a relationship, lost in food or sugar, dopamine, other people, alcohol, all that stuff, then we're not giving our awareness to the thing that needs our attention. And that's because we don't, we're afraid of the consequences of feeling our feelings. This is the truth, dude. We are afraid of the consequences of feeling the feeling. We think that when we feel it, a whole series of things is going to unfold for us. Dude, your, your, your emotions can't hurt you. Like, your brain isn't going to explode. But thinking about that anxiety and amplifying that anxiety and rerunning the same old story over and over and over again... It's going to pummel your immune system. That anxiety is going to spike your heart rate. It is going to shift the entire vibration of your machine, and it will keep you sick. This is why one of the healthiest things that we could ever possibly do, specifically one of the healthiest habits we could ever possibly do, is practice saying nice things to us when we're low. Looking like Polly Shore. You know who else thinks I look like Polly Shore? Polly Shore does. <laughs> I released a video. He actually commented and said I look like him. That's an old story. Before I started helping people, um, my whole TikTok was Polly Shore. 
Um, and then people were like, dude, with my shirt off and my face and my hair out, they're like, you look like Vin Diesel and Polly Shore. So I went by Vin Weasel for a while. <laughs> you guys did this to me, man. You're, it's all your fault. Uh, my boyfriend just signed up for your calendar, told him about your TikToks. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. I'm so stoked. I meet with people every single day, sometimes 20 to 40 new people a week, which means my calendar is always packed. So if there's anybody that is struggling, that is looking for a sobriety coach, someone that's like on their team, it is, it's, I have a few slots available. So if you're even remotely interested in, in submitting an application, you can go to the link in my bio or just go to beyondsober.org and click the apply button. Um, and then all the information is right there. You can decide whether or not I'm the guy. If I'm the guy that you think is going to help you improve your overall quality of life, either get you sober or help you stay sober, then there's an application process and I'm more than happy to meet with you and uh, give you all the tools and resources and perhaps we work well together. <laughs> so with that, speaking of Lincoln Bio and all that, um, one of the things that I just did because I'm up at four in the morning and because I feel so damn good all the time uh, is I just put the Beyond Sober wiki out. So if you guys don't know what a wiki is, it's basically like the how-to. It is kind of like Wikipedia, but better. So I've been able to curate a ridiculous amount of content. I'm talking about it will leave you busy learning about mental health, specifically from the way that I speak right there on the website. What's up, dude? What is five person? <laughs> what is five person? What's up? And so you guys can go to beyondsober.org and then there's a button on the top that says support and just click on wiki. You can type in anything. You can type in anxiety. You can type in stress. You can type in relax. You can type in alcohol, addiction, mental health, whatever. And it will pull up every single thing that I've ever talked about in regards to that specific subject. It's going to link you articles. It'll link you TikToks. It'll link you guides. There's numerous guides on there now. So y'all don't have a reason not to take care of yourself, man. It's all right there. And when you're ready... It's, it, it's, it's waiting for you. So once again, you guys can gain access to that by just going to the website, beyondsober.org. Miss you, man. Beyondsober.org. Um, all of the support, all the tools, all the resources are there for you. Um, and if you haven't connected with me off TikTok, if you haven't hit that link in my bio, everybody does, that decides to share their information with me, I send over a free copy of the official Beyond Sober Six Step Recovery Guide. So maybe it's something that you could benefit from. There's a PDF download that you can read. Um, and then the link actually goes to the official uh, program article within the wiki. Super duper sick, man. I'd love your support on that. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Um, and if you think someone else can benefit from that, feel free to share it with them. Um, you're amazing. I, I appreciate you. 99.9% <laughs> of my time is not just structuring my life and content and all these things. I want you to look at this stuff, dude. Like, these are all different variations of videos. I don't know if you can see all this stuff. Let me see if I can get a big world view of this. These are all just, there we go. I'm gonna zoom out. So all of my content, I don't know if you guys can see this. Those are all different videos that I've written. <laughs> These are all ready to go into production. So my entire life is about delivering every single thing you'll ever possibly need. Radar's in the building. What up, bro? I know I'm so stoked to see you, brother. It's it, my life is is de, you know centered around making sure that we're all in a position to actively improve our quality of life. The trippy, the trippiest thing with all of this is every single person, including Ray, bro. You remember that feeling, man, when you're like, "There's no way I'm gonna be able to not just get sober. I'm not gonna be able to save my job. My job's on the line, dude." You never thought that it was going to be easy. You thought that it was going to be this long-winded, extravagant process. It was going to be miserable. And yeah, bro, you struggled in the beginning, man. Paulina, you struggled in the beginning too. But the reality with this is once you have the support and the tools and the community or whatever it is that works for you, then you can activate the power within hope. Hope is the last thing you have before you give up, right? And with just a little bit of hope and some direction, we just make one more healthy decision. One more healthy decision for us, and then we start to feel some of the actual effects. 
What's most important for me is not to help you fix the thing. I want to help you be capable of fixing the thing in the future, long term, right? So it doesn't come down to fixing the problem. If this is the problem and the problem doesn't exist, you still do. Technically, that problem exists because you exist. If you're not a different person, then the problem is still there. <laughs> this is where personal growth and, ex and expansion becomes the driving force and absolute um, definite solution to long-term sobriety, but more importantly, health and happiness, right? So Doreen, I want you to remember this. Sobriety is easy when you love who you are, dude. Sobriety is no problem when you're excited about what you're doing. And more importantly, sobriety is the easiest thing on the planet when you're excited about where you're going and where that space is taking you. Because sobriety is just a collect, it's, it's, it's inevitable. It is a collection of epiphanies that you had since your last drink. So I want you to remember this. My whole life from here on out is derivative of the epiphanies I have since this drink, after this drink. If I do nothing now, I get nothing. Nothing happens. I know epiphanies. If I don't talk, if I just sit here, if I go back and just scroll on TikTok, if I just go watch a movie, if I don't do anything, then I'm the same person and I just haven't had water in a while. Like, that's it, right? You're not a different person. And I say this to go, the person or the, you as a human is who we focus on. We focus on the neuroscience, the actual neural network that you identify with, that literally is the codes that have been written. The way you move your arm, the way you look at your watch, those are all neural networks. That has been conditioned to act as someone in survival mode. If you're not in survival mode or still acting as if you are, then we have to actively start becoming someone that isn't in survival mode, that isn't struggling in place. Otherwise, you're going to be drinking less alcohol, less of the coping mechanism, but still have the exact same amount of stress and anxiety, minus the coping mechanism. This is why people lapse in their sobriety, and people that have full-on addictions will relapse, because nothing is happening now that you're, not out, of, now that you're out of rehab. Now that you're not in that AA room, now what? Now what? Where are the fundamental elements? Your greatest success isn't going to be just not drinking. You're a human, dude. A straight up person. An entity. An energetic force that is unstoppable. And limiting yourself by saying, dude, I'm not, I'm not drinking. That's badass when that is your greatest accomplishment to date. That's awesome. But there is a point beyond sobriety when that's in the past, just like everything else that's ever happened to you, when you're excited to be able to share your true successes and what you've learned, how you've grown, who you've become since your last drink, that's real success. Real success is being able to realize that you're the most successful and almost you're the most successful person in almost every room you walk into. And it has nothing to do with the fact that you stopped drinking. It has everything to do with what you've done since your last drink. Dory, think about this. Your value doesn't increase because you're not hurting yourself. Most people on the planet aren't doing that. The talent code is a good read. Amazing read, dude. Oh, my God. I was going to order it again. It, like, honestly, dude, I'm being called to watch it or to, to read it again, dude. Thank you for reminding me, man. I was thinking about it yesterday. So we look at this and go, like, your, your success, your perceived value, your true value improves not because you stop drinking, but because you choose to actively improve your quality of life. When you need less, you have more. Absolute facts. When you need less, you have more. All I need is this, and I have all of that at my fingertips? Damn, I'm abundant as fuck! I'm the most abundant person I know. Abundant is a feeling. It's, an, it's a realization. It is a truth. It is a commitment to the absolute, 
that you have everything you need. You've always had everything you needed. You may not have had everything that you wanted. Maybe you wanted it to be less stressful. Maybe you wanted a friend at that time, but you still had everything you needed. You still have everything you need right now, and then more. Now, not only do you have everything you need and then more, but you're a new person because you are you plus this conversation. You're different. Now that you're different, you don't necessarily have an excuse. What you don't change, you choose. And this is why, like, I continue to show up. Maybe something I say is going to be like, all right, all right, we're going to put in the work. You're going to put in the work doing nothing and be tired as fuck, or are you going to put in the work doing something and be the exact same amount of tired? Eventually, once you do that work, you find yourself not working as hard anyway. You're not stressing yourself out because you realize that all the stress that you're going through is literally in your mind. You've been creating that for you and giving yourself a reason to drink and to punish yourself, thinking that you deserve it because you have a habit of talking shit about you, which is something that you didn't choose. You didn't choose to be your greatest hater. <laughs> why would you choose that for you? And why do you believe that you have to struggle and you deserve it? You don't. You deserve happiness. And you don't need a reason to be happy. We're just taught that we're supposed to have one. We have to look at all these things. Listen to what I'm saying. We're all taught that you can be happy because, right? When you've got the house, when you've got the car, when you've got the job, when you've got the friends, when you've got the money, when you've got the family. Jenny, thank you so much. When you got this, you got that. You, 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 all these things. When you do this, you can be happy. Who told us this? Who told us this? What we don't change, we choose. So if we don't change our perspective on why we don't need a reason to be happy, then we're constantly going to choose to find reasons why we don't deserve to be happy. You're a human, dude. At the very base of your existence here on Earth, which is another place you did not choose to be on, you deserve happiness. Not because of what you're doing. Not because of what you've done. And not because of what you're about to do. You deserve happiness. For no reason at all. You might feel more happy, which is no more happy than you actually are. Remember this. You are happy. How happy you are just comes down to the awareness. If you give yourself permission to recognize that you're actually a happy person just struggling, then you're spending less energy focusing on the struggle and more energy on focusing on the happiness that actually is you. Happiness only exists because you do. If you weren't here, where would the happy go? It wouldn't be around. You wouldn't be here. But you are here. You deserve happy. And here's what's most important. The people that deserve the most amount of happiness are the ones that think they don't deserve it. Goodness gracious. <laughs> that think it's supposed to be hard to obtain the trippy part about happiness is it is not in anything. Happiness is a state of being, even at our lowest. Happy people, at, on our worst day, their worst day is still a good day. It's, it's, a, it's a horrible day, but it's still a great day. Because underneath the pain and the sad and the sickness and the whatever that's eating at somebody, it could literally be COVID, it could be death in the family, whatever, you got to remember, an emotion isn't our entire world. It just feels that way. So even a death in the family or losing somebody or whatever it is, for a happy, healthy person, they are still happy and healthy even when they're struggling. The, here's the truth. I don't know if you guys have seen this on TikTok. There's been two videos. One woman was like, I had it all, man. I had the mansion. I had the cars. I had all two of the toys. I had the trucks. I had the, the, uh, the motorcycles. I had the quads. I had the trailers. I had all that stuff. And a failing marriage. A, oh, no, no, no. It wasn't a failing marriage. And her husband was dying. She's like, once we, he got diagnosed, we realized that none of that stuff mattered. None of it. You're not just going to go touch a quad and be like, okay, I'm happy now. You're not just going to walk into your house that is too big anyway and go like, I'm happy now. It's not in anything. It is not something that is in or obtainable anywhere outside of you. And then she goes on to say, now I live in a cabin. I have enough money. I don't want this, that, and the other. I don't desire any of these things. She has less. She desires less. 
and therefore she has more. And then she says, very strategically and specifically, which sparked another viral video, which is, I am happy in ways that the world cannot take it away from me. That's, that's what I teach. That's the piece that I attempt to help people unlock in their own world. It doesn't come down to the fact that because something happened to her or because something happened to him, she got happiness. No. It comes down to the realization that you don't need a reason to be happy. And you're allowed to be happy for no reason. Nothing is going to make you happy. But things will, will contribute to your state of happiness. You can't get more happy than happy. You can just feel more and more and more of it. You can't get more sober than sober because sober is sober. You can be sober longer. You can be happier longer. But you're not more happy. It's infinite. It's this energetic state of being. And when we disconnect from the things that aren't contributing to our state of happiness, aren't making us feel like we're moving forward, and aren't helping us feel like we have enough or making money, dude, if we continue hanging around all the things that make us miserable, that make us feel like we're stuck, and make us feel like we don't have enough, we will never give ourselves permission to be happy. That all stems from the healthy habit of talking to yourself and, real, and giving yourself permission to be happy for no fucking reason. Happiness feels weird when it didn't just show up randomly. Imagine every every morning in, in meditation, 4.30 a.m., 4.15 sometimes, I'm in meditation and I'm sitting here, I'm just chilling, and I go like, it's okay to be happy, Cody. And I'd say, I'll start grinning. There's nobody around, dude. It's just me. I'm sitting here. I'm like, you're allowed to be happy, bro. And it's like in my brain, right? In my mind. I mean, I'm like looking at lights. I'm doing all this crazy stuff. I'm like, dude, just smile, bro. And I'm sitting there like, all right, all right, all right. And then I sit in that feeling and I sit there for no reason. I don't need a reason, but I enjoy it. You're allowed to be happy because it feels good. That's it. Like it's it. It's a part, it's built into your machine, but we want to go like, no, 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 no. I didn't have my coffee yet. Nope, nope, nope. I didn't respond to my emails. Nope, nope, nope. I didn't go to the gym yesterday. Nope. My, my stomach hurts. You can still be happy and have a stomach ache. <laughs> Speaking of which, my ADHD is kicking in. Something cool that I that I heard was, dude, I can hurt myself and still grow. God damn it, that is so true. That's what fitness is. And I took that into the gym today, but that's not that it that doesn't just apply to fitness. You can hurt yourself and still grow. This is where the misconception comes in. Causing yourself harm and pain doesn't automatically induce growth. Because if you can't get any lower and you're just pounding your mind and you're just beating your existence, you're not giving yourself space to grow, space to heal. This is why we grow through what we go through. We grow through what we go through. Everything is for us. We end up, Glam Raptor in the building, what's up girl? We end up just like thinking and, and believing wholeheartedly, <laughs> what's up Liz? Wholeheartedly that if we let the pain go, that we're not learning our lesson. We think that if we grow through the circumstance, whether it's trauma in the past or something that we did recently or some feeling of success that we didn't achieve because we did or didn't do something, we feel like if we feel good after that happened, that we're a bad person. You're not a bad person because you learned your lesson, dude. You're not a bad person because I say you are. You're not a bad person because they say you are. You know the best people on the planet are the ones that gave themselves permission to grow through the most difficult as aspects of their life. Where do you think strength comes from? Do you think the strongest people on the planet are sitting here like the Hulk, just, just fuming and refusing to let the pain go? That's why most people continue drinking. That's, that's why we hang on to the pain, especially when we're drinking too much, because we need a reason to drink. 
So as soon as we process that pain and it's no longer actively hurting us, we don't necessarily have a reason to continue that unhealthy habit of escaping our mind with a poison. But that poison is a parasite and it's not going to let you just disconnect. It's going to help you realize that you need it. It's going to help you pick up other things that deserve your misery. Other things. It's going to remind you of all that stuff. And as soon as those feelings come in, you now have another reason to drink. You have another reason to be miserable. You have another reason. This is why we need to think greater than our emotions. Just because we feel a certain way doesn't mean we're not supposed to feel it. 81 days free. Hell yeah, dude. That's amazing. You and I are the exact same amount of sober. Sober, sober. So four days sober is the same as four years sober. 81 days, bro. That's the same as 81 years. Not drinking alcohol. That's phenomenal, man. I'm so proud of you. Hell yeah. Um, uh, did I spit blood up? Um, the first time I spit blood up, um, I ended up in the hospital. I threw up three stomachfuls of blood. And that's how I found out that my liver was failing. As a matter of fact, this morning, I had to get extremely loud while, while just walking around this house with a homie on Instagram because he hit me up and he's like, hey, bro, I need your help, blah, blah, blah. I've been throwing up blood every day for the past year. What the? Go to the hospital, dude. You know, healthy people don't do that. You don't bleed for no reason. I know I, my insides turned black, black, dude. Like it was the most disgusting. I was rotting from the inside. And that's because of the amount of blood that I was swallowing. I was excreting. I was bleeding from orifices, dude. Like alcohol is a literal carcinogen, dude. It causes cancer. It rots your body from the inside. It shrinks your brain, dude. It shrinks your brain. It is directly linked to numerous causes of cancer, dude. Even for people who drink casually. So homies in, in my inbox being like, hey man, I've been throwing up blood for a year and the doctors aren't taking care of me. They, they just, they just kind of like, you know, I'm a high functioning alcoholic and they're just pawning me off. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You need to fight right now. Cause he said straight up, he's like, dude, I'm, I think I'm killing myself. I think I'm dying. I'm like you are dude. You 100% are. There's, it only gets worse, man. It only gets worse. And I feel so horrible when I have to literally like, scream at people dude homegirl that i'm working with right now she wouldn't have to spend nine hours in ic or i'm sorry in in the er going through all of her fucking withdrawals but i had to fucking scream at her dude get the fuck off of tiktok and get your ass to the hospital i cannot save you if you're not alive anymore man i cannot support you if you're not here dude go stop talking to me man why are you talking to me that's because alcohol knows that it's not supposed to be there, but it's going to fight to stay around. So from that low state of health, when we're so low, alcohol goes, no, you need me, dude. You don't need that. It's fine. Just one more shot. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It, it, it doesn't matter if you're throwing up blood. You, I'll be here for you. That's how alcohol is a narcissist. That's the parasitic nervous system, the, the parasitic nervous system that is provided to us by alcohol, man. It becomes you. You think, feel, and act as alcohol. Listen to this, dude. Alcohol doesn't make you act like anyone. It makes you act like alcohol. Alcohol is a parasite. Parasites need a host. And it will, it doesn't, it will literally, it literally is your blood. It is your brain. It is influencing every single thing in your entire life, including the way you perceive yourself and the world around. The world is pathetic. It's only as pathetic as you are. Absolute facts. Because until you shift that by giving yourself permission to disconnect from the parasite, you're never going to see how fucking beautiful you are, dude. You are never going to see how powerful you are. You're never going to see what's going for you. You're never going to see what's possible. You are only going to focus physically and mentally on what you don't like, what's not working, and what you don't want. That is a horrible world to live in. I was there. I lived there for 16 years. Two and a half of those years, I was a high-functioning alcoholic. Dude. I was taking 30 shots a day. Bright yellow. Dude, disgusting. So when I talk about this, 
I know how it literally, it, it's like venom, dude. It gets in here and it becomes you. You become it. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's, that's the interesting part. And I want, I want you guys to know that you're, it, if you, when you, this goes back to what you practice when you're drinking, you're going to master when you're not. That another way of saying that is, if alcohol has been such a prime part of your life and you treat it kind of like a friend, it's at every party, it's there when you're bored, it's there when you got nothing to do, it's there when you're celebrating, then when you're not drinking, there's an emotional disconnect, which is called alcohol grief. Um, but the other part of that is when you're not drinking, you're still thinking the same thoughts but you're not, it's not possible for you to feel the feeling associated with that unless you inject your mind and body with the reason it makes sense. I'm going to try and say that again so I master what I'm saying. How you think and how you feel when you're drinking. Remember, you're writing neurological codes while you're under the influence. You're shaping your mind. You're shaping your world. This goes to this and this goes to this. If alcohol is in your bloodstream, it's making sense. The dots are connecting themselves in an alternate universe. So when you stop drinking, all of those dots still connect, but you don't know how to navigate them. It doesn't make sense. You're like, okay, well, I feel more drunk. I feel more weird. I feel more out of it because I thought that thought and that code is there, but it doesn't feel right. So I'll just drink. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. So where I'm going with this is when you're not drinking is when the work needs to go in. The energy goes into rewriting or overwriting or writing new codes alongside the world you practice living in for so long. Because you're not in the same world. It is a new reality. In real true reality, this, whatever we perceive here, the most accurate representation of what reality is, right? It's, you're, it's only possible to navigate it in a healthy way if you practice healthy behavior, which is new healthy habits. It doesn't just, once again, just because you stop drinking, it doesn't guarantee happiness. It doesn't guarantee you're going to be healthy. It doesn't guarantee anything. It doesn't guarantee you're never going to drink again. It doesn't guarantee your friends are going to like you. It doesn't guarantee fucking anything. The only thing that it does guarantee is an opportunity for you to actually design a life you love to live. But remember this. The world changes when you do. I stop looking like Polly Shore when you stop associating me with him. I don't change and then you see something different. You start to see me different and I am different. That doesn't come down to anything that I do. It comes down to everything that you do. It's all perspective. It is all perception. How do you perceive yourself? How do you want to perceive yourself? If you're your biggest hater, it's time to start practicing being your biggest fan. <laughs> Absolute facts, man. Because that perpetual reinforcement has so much energy packed into it. The only thing that can defeat hate is love. The, the energetic force of love is the only energetic force, vibration, that will literally crumble the force of hate and anger and despair and, and desperation and fragile and victim, uh, victim, victimization. That's low vibrational ways of living. You cannot raise your state of consciousness and awareness and physical attributes, as in, like, basically improve your physical and mental health, if you choose to act as someone that lives in a shitty world. Ding dong. <laughs> Absolute fact. If you continue practicing finding a reason why the world sucks, you're just reminding yourself why you suck at living in it. That's all that is. That's all that is. <laughs> So sobriety is your opportunity to actively improve your own personal reality. As your personal reality changes, you have a new personality. Listen to what I'm saying. Your personality is your personal reality. What the world is the way it is because you see it that way. 90% of what we see is going to be the negative shit. This is why the TikToks that I put out recently is like, I don't care about anything. Ray, you know this, bro. I don't care about much, right? I care about 111 people, right? I care about, I care about things that 
actually hold value in my life. Like, I'm not a shitty person because I don't give a fuck about the news, about all the things that everyone else thinks. Who cares? Who cares? The only things that matter is what you choose to prioritize. And if what you're choosing to prioritize is how fucking bad you feel, then expect to feel like shit forever. That's a decision that we're making, right? <laughs> it's a choice, right? But also the trip with this, this is like fighting back too. So if you feel like the victim, when are you going to start acting like the superhero? You don't wake up as a superhero. Remember, you can't get pummeled into strength. You can get pummeled into weakness. <laughs> you can, this is why like toxic parenting, they go like spank them and beat them and put them in the corner and do all this stuff. It makes us afraid to open our mouth. It makes us afraid to fight for ourselves. It literally puts us in this position where we just think that everything that happens is our fault. And we victimize ourselves for not knowing better. And then we take all of that into our adult life thinking that because no one's going to show up and literally destroy my life on my behalf that I'm supposed to do it. Isn't that what being an adult is? Hurting yourself until you figure it out? Aren't you supposed to be hard on you? That's what everyone else has been doing. Isn't that what I'm supposed to be doing too? So, wait, that's not how, I don't understand. We seriously think that these things that don't matter, matter. And we prioritize what doesn't work for us so we can have a reason to feel like shit. It's easier to feel bad. It's easier to feel like shit than it is to maintain happiness. Happiness takes work, dude. Tricks, you know this shit. Happiness takes work. It doesn't mean it's harder, but it takes a different kind of focus, a different kind of work, a different kind of energy. But this is where we talk about, bro, are you, are you gonna, Tricks, are you, are you gonna struggle in place, man? I know you're treading water, but all of this flailing, it's not going anywhere. You're, 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 just, you're just drinking all this water in, man. All of the literal energy that you're putting in just to stay afloat? Motherfucker, reach for a stick, bro. Grab a stick. Start building a boat. You can float, grab, you know what I'm saying? Eventually what happens is you have this raft and you're literally, you're not struggling anymore. You put in the same energy but in a different area. It's supposed to be difficult. If it was easy, goodness gracious, you wouldn't have anywhere to grow. You gotta also remember this, dude. It's not difficult because you are weak. It is difficult because it's difficult. I gotta say this shit again, man. I gotta I got remind you of this shit. It's not difficult because you are weak. It's difficult because it's difficult. Heavy is heavy, man. It doesn't matter what it is. Do you think weightlifters don't stress themselves out, dude? Like this dude's lifting a thousand pounds. It's heavy. It is hard. That's the point. Just because they can't lift a thousand pounds, whether it's a thousand pound weight or a thousand pound emotion, it doesn't mean that they're weak. It means that they're getting stronger. They have to get stronger. That's We look at this and go like, oh, I'm not shit. Oh, I don't have this. I, I'm not worthy of this. I obviously don't have what it takes, so it's not for me. Every single thing that you've ever obtained in your entire life was obtained through the work you put in. Everything. That includes your misery. That includes your successes. That includes your kids. All your money. Everything that you've ever obtained has been obtained through the energy you put into it. Stop acting like you're not going to figure it out, man. <laughs> Why are you pretending like it's not going to work out for you? You've survived everything that's ever happened to you, dude. Ever happened to you. Every single time you thought it wasn't going to work out, guess what happened? It worked out. Every time that you thought you weren't going to make it, guess what you did? You made it against everything that everybody said. Here you are, dude, still struggling forward. Holy shit. I guarantee that you are probably the strongest person that you know. How many people that aren't elders, right? How many people, Tink, do you know that could struggle the way that you struggle? Do you think that they could handle what, you, what you've been going through? Do you think they could handle your life? Do you think they are capable of processing that? There might be a handful of people who have developed like this skill set to be able to manage emotions in, in, in stressful times, but like, nobody knows the struggle like you know the struggle because 
nobody you know is you. They'd be devastated. Exactly, dude. No. You want to talk to me? You want to you wanna tell me that you can't do it? I know for a fact that you're the strongest person you know, dude. You're probably one of those cats that's willing to throw themselves in the middle of all these rugged situations because you know that you're the one that can handle it. You've been through that shit. You've done that shit. You've grown through that shit. But you're the one that can't fucking get happy? What the fuck? You've done enough, man. You are enough. And you have enough. You are, you are so deserving of health, happiness, abundance, and more importantly, dude, peace. All of those fights, all of that energy, all of those emotions have all been attributed to creating peace, man. That's all we want. That's it. All we want is peace. Whether we're seeking it with the bottle, seeking it with the person, seeking it with the thing, or seeking it with the thought, all we want is peace. And that's 100% what I want for you. That's why I keep showing up. That's why I write all these, these videos. And so I got 3,500 videos. <laughs> Endless amounts of content, man, plus the program. Like, what we talk about here is like a, like a speck <laughs> of what's inside Beyond Sober, dude. Like, we talk about some generic topics here, and I get, like, super passionate. But be so, man, we go, like, specific into these areas. And that's the thing, man. And I'll tell you this. You're not going to get this information in AA. You're not going to get this information in rehab. I know this to be an absolute fact. You're not going to get this shit in therapy. You're not going to get this shit in a detox facility. That's And here's the trip. And here's, here's the absolute proof on this shit. Three things that I've determined. Either they don't know this information. Or they don't want you to have it. I think it's both. I think that there's certain elements that they may touch on and certain people who have gotten results in other programs who are like, you're talking about, nah bro, they don't talk about this shit. Either, I don't know which one is worse. Either they don't know it or they don't want you to know it. Like what, what the fuck? Like what the actual, this is like thoroughly upsetting because it comes down to the health and happiness of my people. Why do all these other programs and solutions, it's not a fucking solution if it's a band-aid. That is a short-term answer to a long-term fucking injury. So going to AA, no hate on AA, there's lots of people, millions of people who have gotten results, still alcoholics and are forever going to call themselves an alcoholic, but there's 76 million people that aren't considering AA right now and other solutions. Because there's, it's not designed as a permanent solution. It's meant to help you put a fucking band-aid on and go like, here's your sucker, you did good. Okay, don't do that again. How about fuck you? How about help me, dude? How about support me? Help me. Like, no, don't save me. I can save myself. But I want your support as I do it. That's beyond sober, dude. It's the core fundamental elements of your mind as a human. Not you as a fucking number, dude. Like, this shit is so passionate. I'm so passionate about this shit. I, it, it's, it's, it's gross. I know what it feels like to be a number, dude. I know what it feels like to be treated like an animal. I know what it feels like to be treated like you don't matter. Like, you are less than human. Your emotions play a massive role in your success and your downfall. If we don't recognize these things and we don't develop new structures... To help you design the fundamental core pillars of your mind. Then, you once again are the same person, just not doing the thing. Which means you are equally capable of going back to detox. Of needing AA. Of needing the program. Of needing a sponsor. Of needing a fucking band-aid. Of needing medication. What the fuck? <laughs> this is why just not drinking changes absolutely nothing. It puts you in a position to recognize who you've become accidentally through your state of survival. Remember, if we're drinking alcohol excessively or it's not continuously adding value to our life, we're not choosing this. It is now a survival tactic. 
It is something that is somewhat necessary and prioritized in our life because it's helping us feel like we got this. It's helping us feel like without it, we don't have enough. Without it, we don't have the strength. Without it, we're not smart enough. Without it, we're not confident enough to take care of our shit. Without it, we physically don't have the energy to struggle for it. Without it, we are not who we need to be. That's an, an emotional dependence. I've had two shirts over there. <laughs> Wasn't any happier. Yeah, we are survivalists. So that, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Without it, I can't cope. You can cope. It's just you haven't practiced it. Looking good. Thank you so much. I'm super happy. I went to one, uh, none were more than a week, two sober. I had to find something else. Yeah, dude. Here's the trip. Here's the reality. And here's, here's the absolute truth. The only way to do it is your way. Hey, what's up, cowgirl? The only way to do it is your way. You can't do it my way because you're not me. You can take all the tools and things and do it your way. This is why Beyond Sober is hyper-individualized. It's hyper-focused on you as a person, the core of your being, the person beneath the pain, the person beneath the poison. That's Beyond Sober. It's speaking to the person back here that's watching you do the dumb shit. You're the higher version of yourself is the one that's here this version of you isn't struggling but there's another version of you that is that's the one <laughs> who's driving the vehicle dude you gotta swap places man you gotta put that guy in the back seat but you can't just like throw him back there because here's what happens he's still hanging on to the wheels you throw him back there so you might be trying to get him back there but he's like well hold up now nah, bro we need to convince that driver of your life that it's okay to take his hand off the wheel and there needs to be a slow transition in between drivers. So here's the thing. Maybe they don't go in the back seat. Maybe for a little while, they're just riding shotgun with you. Maybe this older version of you can just navigate for a little bit. He's there. She's there to keep you safe, right? They've got the map, but you're the one fucking driving. But it takes time. It's a process. This is why 12 steps isn't going to get you anywhere other than having to become someone different so you can get the results of a specific program dude sobriety and mental health is evolution and the reprogramming of your mind your subconscious the the, the biokinetics of your energetic being is what shifts evolution and happiness create sobriety sobriety is just the space between not drinking that's the easy stuff but the work comes down to who do you want to be? You don't have to have an idea. But what, the real question is, who do you not want to be? I want you to look at your life. Look at what you perceive it to be. Look at who you've been acting as. Look at who other people have been assuming that you are. Is that the person that you actually are? Is that really you? Is that really, really, really you? Is the person you see in the mirror actually that person? Or is that just a version of you that has a little bit more priority? Because once we shift or begin the shifting, then you start to have what's called your identity crisis, which is where you look at yourself over time and you don't even recognize you because you're glowing, because you are abundant, because there's more peace, there's less chaos. There's just so, you're, you're glowing from the inside out. Your skin looks better. Your eyes look brighter. Your smile is whiter. You actually enjoy being by yourself, dude. You're like, I'm totally cool. It's whatever. I'll go or not go. It's what I just don't care. It doesn't matter to me because I'm cool as a cucumber, dude. Right? Happier in a tornado in a trailer park. Right? That's me all the time. Absolutely, Paulina, you know this, man. You know the glow. <laughs> and it's just so magical. That glow is inevitable, not because you stop drinking and not because you stop consuming that person, place, or thing that's not good for you. That glow is inevitable when you first stop, realize that you matter and you deserve that glow, man. <laughs> that glow isn't in anything. You are the glow. That happiness isn't in anything. It is you, which brings up the absolute fact that you're not searching for happiness, man. You're not searching for peace. All you're doing is becoming aware 
of how much peace and happiness is actually you. You are the peace that you're searching for. You are the happiness that you're looking to experience. You don't need a reason to ha be happy. You deserve it regardless of how you feel about it. You could fight anyone on that. And at your core, when I say you deserve to be happy, part of you may go like, uh, but, but, but. that's not you. <laughs> Why would you deny you happiness? You don't find it. You allow it. This is the interesting part. This is why NLP, Neural Language Programming and Processing, is very important. You don't find happiness. But happiness isn't at the end of this. When I stop doing this, I'm not going to be happy. When I go to the gym, I went to the gym today. Do you think I went to the gym today and I was happy after the gym? No. Happiness isn't at the end of the workout. It is the workout. Happiness isn't in the car. It is you. It, the, the happiness only exists in that vehicle because you're fucking in it. Because you're thinking about it. It's not in anything. And you're not going to find it by doing things. When you give yourself permission to act like a kid for a, certain, for a second. Go climb a tree, dude. Drink some water. Go play outside. <laughs> Stop giving your attention to shit that literally doesn't contribute to your state of happiness. Look, I want you to fucking everybody. Everybody. I don't care. I don't care. You can be the happiest person on the planet. I still do this, man. Like this, this is, dude, even with crayons and shit, we're drawing patterns, right? Look, I want you to make a list. You can type it out. You can write it out. You can speak it out, whatever. Healthy practice. I want you to write what happiness is and what happiness isn't. I want you to look at what's in your life and go like, do, I don't want you to think about like what a perfect life is. Fuck that. I want you to think about what really you need in your life. Ten things. You probably don't even need that. Five things. What is it that you really need in your life? It could be security. It could be a person. It could be a feeling. It could be a thought. It could be a space, it could be an energy, it could be anything. But what is it that you truly need in your life? And as long as you have those things, or are possible, it's possible to obtain those things, that you could be happy. Like, think about this. So I, I, know, I know, remember this, like, a lot of people go like, I need a million dollars. You fucking don't. You just need to be less stressed. Like, that's it. You, you will feel like a million dollars. million is just a feeling. You have no idea what a million dollars feels like. And it's scientifically proven that it doesn't feel any better than $75,000. In society, you feel exactly the same. Your happiness maxes out at $75,000. You, you're not going to be more happy than that because happy is happy. But I want you to really evaluate what happiness is. What are the key elements that you can be complete? These are the things that you're going to live with for the rest of your life. Think about this, dude. I want you to really get detailed on if you only had these things and you could don't try and justify why they need to be there. I want you to look at it and go like, as long as I have this, as long as I have a connection with my son, as long as I have this, that, and the other, I'll be fine. Fine is more than enough. Fine is abundant. But then I also want you to do the other shit and go like, I don't want this in my life. I don't want to have to worry about texting that motherfucker back. I don't want to have to worry about looking at my bank account. I don't want to have to worry about whatever it is. Get clear with what you don't want and what you don't want to keep in your life. If it's in your life and it's not contributing to your state of happiness, if it's in your life and it's not making you feel like you're moving forward, that could be a person that's holding you back or making you feel bad or not contributing, right? If what's in your life isn't making you feel like you're moving forward in your life, and that could be a job too, or what's in your life isn't making you feel like you have enough or it's not con directly contributing to your abundance, to your money. If it's not making you happy, making you feel productive and successful and not making you money or feel abundant, write that shit down. Because all of those are things that you can actively start saying, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, don't need it, nope, start making progress. Start getting it out. I have conversations with my one-on-one -on -one clients, even yesterday. She's like, I think I have to break up with my fucking boyfriend because I've grown so much and he's refusing to put in any work to meet me where I'm at. 
That's the unfortunate part about personal growth, specifically sobriety, is it gives you permission to outgrow everything that doesn't contribute to your health and happiness. Sometimes it's letting go of people, some family members, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever, significant others. It's sad, but you're worth it. <laughs> you deserve it. No money, just anger and disappointment. With no money, dude, that's awesome. You do anything with no money. What's the point of worrying about bills? You ain't got shit. <laughs> you got no money? What's the point? Bro, stressing about not having money isn't going to make you more money. It's going to attract more reasons why you can't see the opportunities. If you're constantly focused on what you don't have, you're never going to see what's right in front of you. Motherfucker, I'm right in front of you. You don't see me, you're talking about no money. That's what you, that's all you're thinking about. You're thinking about what you don't have, what's not working, and what you don't like. And you're not changing a fucking thing, are you? Are you actively out there? Not just taking what you can get, but if you're not actively making shifts in your life to obtain more money and to be less disappointed, then you are choosing to remain there simply because it feels good. After this conversation, you have no excuse. Everything after what I just said is if you change nothing, then you agree with everything that I just said. You know for a fact that no money is going to come just because you are upset that you don't have money. You know for a fact you're going to continue being disappointed if all you're paying attention to is the things that disappoint you. You know for a fact that happiness isn't on the way if you don't give yourself permission to be happy with no fucking money. And I'm telling you this, self-discipline is doing things specifically because you don't want to do them. I'm telling you this shit. I didn't start making money when I, I lost my house, my car, my job, my money, my friends, my fucking liver, my health. I was a felon, dude. I still have a felony, man. I can't get it. I can't even get hired at Mickey D's. I don't need it. But my point with this shit is... It wasn't until I did exactly what I'm telling you to do right now. This is the pivotal moment in my life where I realized that all the shit. Remember, happiness is also what you don't have to deal with. So I want you to look at this. Look at all the things. Write it down. All the things you don't have to deal with. I don't have to deal with his narcissistic ass. I don't have to deal with her. I don't have to deal with my parents. I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to deal with that guy or this person or the news over here. You, happiness is also what you don't have to deal with. So get clear with what you don't have to deal with. And because you have, you feel like you have no money, feels like you have no health, feels like you have nothing. You have everything. Once you've lost everything, you're free to do anything. That anything is realizing where you actually are. So my point with this is it was at my absolute lowest when I was literally sick on the couch with no money, no job, not a single friend, no car, not a house that was in my name, was, nothing. When I realized that, I got to deal with any of that shit. I could be happy with nothing. I don't have to have everything. I don't have to have money to be happy. As a matter of fact, I know more sad millionaires than I know fucking... <laughs> But it was literally that point when I was like, I have no money and I'm super disappointed in myself and I have nothing to offer the world. I fucking died recently, dude. Everything that I've ever worked for in my entire life, 16 years as a professional DJ, everything, the how, everything is gone. I don't deserve happiness because I lost it. The unfortunate part about that is I didn't deserve to fucking hang on to it because I gained it when I was sick. I wasn't even strong enough to maintain it. That's why it disappeared. It wasn't for me. I wasn't supposed to have that shit. No, I was supposed to lose it all to find a reason why I need nothing to be happy. This is why anything outside of me is a bonus. Everything outside of me is a bonus. I don't need anything, dude. None of this. Take it. Take it. If you want this fucking tree, take it. It's fake. If it's going to help you feel better, fucking take... I don't give a fuck. It's just a... It's just a nothing. You want this coffee thing? It doesn't... None of it matters. You want this umbrella light? You can have the mirror, dude. Like, it, no, take it. I say this to go, like, if I lost everything, I would still be just as happy. Because I know what to do with nothing, and I know what to do with everything. Because it comes down to the core fundamental elements of my mind. Knowing that with a blank slate, I can still be happy. 
With everything working against me, it doesn't mean I have to suffer. When things don't feel like they're working out, that's the universe making space for another opportunity. These are neurological, universal, unfuckwittables, but they only make sense and will only feel right if you practice finding reasons why they actually apply. Just like an affirmation, I am not the problem. I simply have a problem. Damn. That feels weird when you say it for the first 25 times, that eventually you start thinking that shit. That eventually you start to go like, oh shit. You're right. I'm right. <laughs> I just have a problem. I'm not the problem. Fuck you. <laughs> you start to take pride in the fact that you're having a new, actual, healthy thought that's moving you forward. <laughs> and then, once again, as you practice these things, we talk about all this stuff and Beyond Sober. Everything you need is all right there. Everything we talk about right here, it's in detail on, on the website. Actually, a couple of different things I'll talk about this. My brain has been super heavy on literally recording version two. I think I want to call it Beyond Sober's Rebirth program. It's going to be more powerful because it's, it's been in development for like two and a half years, man. Two years. So now we've got the books. We've got the TV show uh, launching in January. That will be on your TVs, your, your smart TVs. Um, the book launches. The TV show launches. Podcast is already popping. Channel is already popping. But I'm thinking about recording version two, the rebirth, um, and taking everything that we've practiced over the last two and a half years and structuring it for, like, next level shit. So that's something I'm working on, which is going to be super duper exciting. Uh, going to sign up tomorrow, brother. Yeah, dude, I love that, man. So here's what's cool. Everybody that moves through module one or week one, which is watching the first five videos and looking at the homework, Everybody that moves through that, whether you're on a trial subscription, you're on the monthly, whether it's lifetime, doesn't matter, or whether you got it on the sponsorship, you move through module, the first module, then you're introduced to the community. It means you have access to the entire Beyond Sober community. That means you're going to meet people who have been in the program, who have been practicing what we're talking about, who have done the homework, that are closer to where you are, and that can actively help you move forward from, from wherever you are, 24-7. Super duper sick. You complete module two, I send you my personal calendar and we get a chance to meet personally. No additional charge, no nothing like that. It's just a progress report. We get to hang out one-on-one. -on -one. Um, to connect with me, dude, to sign up, you can go to beyondsober.org or I make it super duper easy. Just the link in my bio, man. So click my name, go to my page. It says click here, two hands. Um, you can drop your information. You could also ask me a question right there. So if there's something specifically I could answer for you, it'll give you an option. You want me to text you, you want me to email you, um, or do you want me to record you a video? You can just select which one you want, or none of them, it doesn't matter. But the point with that is is that I'm going to send you everything that you need. Also with that link in the bio, it's going to send you the single shot methods, it's going to send you the application, um, it'll send you the six step recovery guide, and for anyone that wants to just like work on all this stuff on their own, I'm going to follow up with you for the next about week and a half, I think maybe two weeks. Every day, I'm going to reach out to you with more information, more strategies, more structures, more accountability, so you can do it without ever even looking at the program. But there is a point when you realize that the professional expert advice and information, is it's imperative to get your hands on that shit, because <laughs> that's the spice. Those are the little things that you can't just fit into a document. It's, it, you can't just take like one thing and go like, okay, I'm fixed now. It's a process. So I'm encouraging everybody, if you haven't connected with me already, hit the link in my bio. I'm not going to spam you. I'll send over everything you need. I'll hold you accountable. Um, and then the other thing here is I'm actively turning beyondsober.org into an official uh, master resource. So when you go to beyondsober.org, you'll see a button that says support. You can actually submit a support ticket. So if you have a question for me or you're in the program and you would like to talk to me about something or there's something I can help you with, you can submit a ticket. If you place an order, you're a member or you have a subscription or something, you can take a look at all of those. That's another place where you can pause your membership if you're either financially struggling or you're just done with the program. It's all right there. You can live chat with me if I'm online. Super duper dope and I'll answer your questions right there. And then what's most important and the most powerful aspect of the support feature is the universal wiki, uh, which means every single question that you have about mental health and sobriety, 
I have probably answered it, and there's a wiki right there. You can type in mental health, boredom, anxiety, relaxation, sleep, whatever it is, habits, it, whatever. And I have probably written an answer for you right there. So every single thing that you could ever possibly need to improve your quality of life is all in one place. And it's on beyondsober.org. <laughs> I want you to have everything you need. Uh, why not create your own app? I just had a meeting with an amazing gentleman today um, about doing that. Uh, Beyond Sober is technically Beyond Sober. We'll have an app in January along with the TV launch or the, uh, uh, the channel launch. It'll also be on Apple. I'll be on Android. I'll be on all OTT platforms. I'll be on Tubi and all that stuff. So Beyond Sober will now be a 24-7 streaming network on over 300 networks. You guys don't have a reason not to improve your life. If someone is struggling, they could be drunk in their living room and just listen to me talk a whole bunch of shit and help them get sober and design a life they love, which means they can get support outside the program as well. Um, and then, yeah. So that's, I was going somewhere with that. Uh, but my point is, is that uh, the real growth and the real expert information is the backbone of Beyond Sober. And that there's a reason what TV channel? It'll be on Tubi. It'll be, as soon as I actually have the, the channel guide, I'll send it out to everybody. That's why it's a good idea to share with your information with me so I can send like different updates. Um, I'll have interviews with people who were throwing up blood <laughs> and are now like happy and healthy. Um, they're going to be sharing their strategies and their stories and everything that you know we'll need. Mama of Wolves will have an interview. Sammy will have an interview. Herbie has an interview. Uh, so Beyond Sober TV is going to be a massive, massive resource for anyone that's struggling with their mental health. It's unlike anything that the, that the world has seen, and that's why I continue to do exactly what I'm doing, um, is to make sure that I am putting in the work and the energy, <laughs> releasing the videos, and creating hours and hours and hours and hours of content, um, and more importantly, that's why I take care of myself. Um, I want a happy and healthy life. The beautiful part about a happy and healthy life is it just comes down to designing it. If you don't know what that looks like, then you don't know what you're looking for. If you don't know what happy and healthy really means to you, then you're just gonna continue focusing on what you think it isn't, which means you're giving all of your attention to what you think the problem is. Get extremely clear with what happy and healthy is. If you don't speak it to the universe, if you don't make it clear within your own mind, and you don't have an absolute, almost blueprint of what you're working towards, then you are simply going to justify why not being in pain is the best day of your life. Remember, Candy, what's up? Just because you're not in pain doesn't mean you feel good. And just because you feel good doesn't mean you're happy. These are all very different elements that we need to focus on and understand, and that's Beyond Sober. Remember, Beyond Sober isn't about alcohol. It's not about drugs. It's about toxicity of the mind. It's about toxic habits, it's about toxic feelings, and more importantly, it's about toxic actions. If we think, continue thinking the same thoughts and feeling the same feelings, we're gonna take the same toxic actions and continue this cycle. We're here to break the generational curses that we've all been plagued with. <laughs> I'm proud of you guys. With that, I gotta eat. My machine is yelling at me and saying that I gotta put some protein in the belly. I love you guys so, so, so much, dude. Honestly, um, I'm so proud to be here. I'm so thankful that you guys continue to show up. Paulina, I see you. I'm so unbelievably humbled that you guys continue to uh, provide me a platform to not just share myself, but to help the, the world improve um, one person at a time, save one life at a time, impact and influence one person at a time, and your love and support and, and continued arrival is beyond just beautiful man and i i want you to know every single day at 4 15 4 30 a.m i am in the deepest state of gratitude and respect and appreciation and love and i want you to know that i am thinking about you every fucking day i am so thankful that you exist exactly the way you do I don't want any other fucking version of you unless that's a better version of you that you personally approve of. But just know that I wholeheartedly appreciate and respect and honor you 
We are one, and we are actively shifting our worlds, and together, we're making magic happen. <laughs> I love you guys. Once again, if you guys haven't connected with me and would like to stay connected with me, you can hit that link in the bio. Share your information. I won't spam you. Definitely take a look at Beyond Sober. We're doing um, tiny monthly subscriptions. If you guys are even remotely interested, you can have access. We're now doing seven-day trials, so you can sign up. If you don't like it, just hit that support button. Let me know. Done. No charges for you guys. If you want to unlock it for a lifetime, you can do that. Uh, but more importantly, if you just want to get a hold of me and you want me to answer a couple questions, you can share your information with me and I'll get back to you. With that said, I'm hungry and you're amazing. Just like my mother always says, take care of you. Okay? Please take care of you. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode of Beyond Sober Podcast, make sure you take a look at Beyond Sober TV. What you didn't get here, you can watch there. BeyondSoberTV.com.